the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sarah, will you start with the roll call? Yes. Brad Crandall. Here. John Horton. Here. Steve Herbstress. Here. Sarah Jones. Here. Sarah LeBreton. Here. Jennifer Sheldon. Here. Tim Wood. Here. Okay. Um, any agenda changes? Okay. Public comments. I have two. First, Rachel Phillips Eaton. Hello, my name is Rachel Phillips Eaton. I would like to share an experience that I have had with the district. My daughter is a sixth grader. She came home one day and told me that she had been called to the office and told she would be taken out of her gym class and placed in a special reading class as her reading score was low. I found this odd because my daughter has good grades. I received a letter from the middle school detailing what this class would be for. The class was tied to test scores. I find it inappropriate that my daughter, who has test anxiety, would be taken out of one class to be placed into another to help her raise her reading comprehension to increase test scores. After speaking with the counselor, an administrator called me. She advised that she is an educational expert. While I am not an educational expert, I am a parent who started volunteering with Penfield Schools when I was 18. I have spent hundreds of hours inside classrooms in all buildings in our district and helping teachers with lessons, aiding children with work, and most importantly, observing. I trust our teachers. I trust their judgment. So while one educational expert was telling me that my daughter needed this class, the other educational experts that spend time with her daily and were never asked their opinions were telling me that she was not struggling. Their observations are what guided me. The conversation ended that the educational expert admin respected my decision and would leave my daughter's schedule alone. My daughter, nor any other student, is a test score. Snapshots of certain times of the year are not always indicative of what else is going on in real life. I feel that our teachers do not have true leadership. Leadership is listening to your people and supporting them. If it's not possible for an admin to spend days in the classroom observing and seeing what decisions are doing to their teacher's physical and mental health, as well as the behavior and ability to learn of our students, then the teachers need to be listened to. While I'm not an educational expert, I know that kids need a brain break for more than 30 seconds every two hours. I know that kindergartners need arts and crafts and other opportunities to grow their fine motor skills. I know that first graders need a set time for writing. Our teachers need to be listened to, valued, and supported. Our district needs to look at the ways they are handling things and realize our students are more than test scores and our teachers are competent. We are driving wonderful teachers away. We are going to drive students away. Things have to change before it is too late. Thank you. Next, I have Linda Smith. Hello, everyone. I am an alumni and also a parent. We received an email on October 23rd about being in the process of implementing a comprehensive initiative. The email was presented to staff on the 20th. On a Friday, how could that allow any feedback from the teachers? Had you asked for their professional, professional opinion, things might have been received differently. Those individuals are the ones that know our children and where they struggle. Also, if this was communicated to the parents sooner, maybe there wouldn't have been so much backlash on social media. If you look up Penfield Schools, it uh, pulls up US News and World Report and greatschools.org. Both show that you do have low test scores, like you stated. And I'm going to say this wrong. Michi, Nishay.com also pulls up. Shows that Athens, Harbor Creek, Marshall, Penfield area are all at the bottom, 50 percentile, with the same rankings as Marshall and Harbor Creek. I'd like to share some of the reviews from them. The staff is absolutely amazing. I loved almost all my teachers, and you could tell they care a lot about us and our safety. The teachers are great, and I learn new things from them every single day. Whenever I need the help, they are there to help me get better. Penfield Schools is a great school to go to if you want a close community and staff that will change your life. Many of the teachers there are enthusiastic about their job and teaching students and pushing them to be their best, and I love that. 
to defense, here are some comments about what we are lacking. Not having enough time to prepare for SAT and ACT, more electives and AP classes, more inquiry-based learning, and opportunities for students to practice leadership skills. Amongst everything that was going on when that letter came out and social media, oddly enough, Thursday, November 2nd, Shopper, I don't know if you guys caught it, Harper Creek ran a four-page ad. One of the things I highlighted was the message from the superintendent, Rob Ridgway, test scores do not improve with route memorization, boring lessons, or worksheets. In order for growth to happen in classrooms, teachers must be passionate and equatable. Perfect timing. Um, I would just like to say, please listen to everybody, staff-wise. Um, they are the ones with our children. I don't want us to not get staff here um, when we're lacking due to bad word of mouth. I don't want us to lose kids and not get school of choice because of word of mouth. Um, I would just like us to uh, fix what needs to be corrected before it's too late. Thank you. Moving um, 6.0 recognitions and presentations. Excellent. So we have um, our recognitions for our student athletes of the month, our Rotary students of the month, and um, then we'll have a presentation of the 2023 audit from um, Nate Walderman from Reed. So we'll get started with. Um, our student athletes of the month. Howdy folks, uh, we have two groups of uh, two months of student athletes uh, of the month that we were presenting tonight because we missed them uh, in the September meeting. So first of all, our September student athletes of the month, our female re recipient is Peyton Rhodes. Peyton uh, is here this evening. She ran cross country for us was our uh, top female cross country runner. Her coach, Coach Green, is here as well. Um, so we're really excited. Peyton is a sophomore, has had a great couple of years for us. And uh, besides being a very good student, or athlete, she's a tremendous student. So certainly recipient of this award. So congratulations, Peyton. And our Male recipient for September was Caden Guthrie. Caden's uh, mother is here. She will accept the award for Caden. Caden is presently in the locker room getting ready for a basketball game right now. So, uh, but Caden did a tremendous job for us this year as a student athlete representing our football team. Coach Hatton is here this evening and uh, helped develop uh, all of our football team. But Caden did a tremendous job, has overcome many, many things. We're really proud of him. So, and our Honored to offer this to Katie on your behalf. Thank, Thank you. And then in October, our October Student Athletes of the Month, representing our volleyball program, our female recipient is Avery Moran. Avery is here this evening. Avery is a senior, has done just a tremendous job in our, in our athletic program as a volleyball player and as a softball player. And most of all, she is an incredible student. Uh, she has a GPA far above 4.0, which is hard for me to fathom. Uh, her parents are here this evening and her volleyball coach. I saw Coach Wells here this evening. So we're excited they're all, they're all here as well. So Avery, congratulations. And our October male student athlete of the month was Isaiah Adams. Isaiah also represented our football team, had just a fantastic senior season. Uh, he also is in the locker room right now getting ready for a basketball game. So his father's here to accept the award on his behalf. Uh, Isaiah's done a tremendous job in our program as a multi, uh, multiple student athlete. Also represents football, basketball, and does just a tremendous job. So we're excited to give that 
on, uh, to Isaiah on his, his behalf. Congratulations. Photo Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. We're very proud. Okay. Um, next, we have our um, Rotary Student of the Month. Um, one of the great things that we get to do with Battle Creek uh, Rotary Club is uh, have eight students that are awarded. Uh, across the course of the school year, they get to bring a influential educator with them to the luncheon, and I um, get the honor of attending as many of those as I can, and if I'm not able to, we have other administrators that are able to attend and support as well. And so we wanted to take some time as well to recognize these students here because they're outstanding um, in terms of their citizenship and their engagement in the school, um, not just academically, but also um, in other civic and social opportunities as well. So uh, the first person we wanted to recognize is Cadence McClenny. Come on up. Cadence McClenny. Oh. The October Student of the Month at Rotary, and I apologize, I had influenza and I missed it. <laughs> But um, I have to say, it has been a pleasure getting to know you. I'm so proud to know you. Um, you've taught me a ton, and I cannot wait to see all of the great things that you do in your future. So congratulations, Kate. And our other student of the month was um, Elijah Fox from September. So we'll invite him to come um, next time and see if we can get him here, okay? Thank you. Next, uh, Nate Balderman. Thank you uh, for your time this evening. Um, let's do it. I'm actually, it's a great crowd of stands. I usually have people. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, thank you for your uh, time this evening. Uh, I'll be fairly brief. Just wanted to give an overall uh, results uh, for the audit. Um, not going to go through page by page through the financials, uh, but just kind of give you the highlights of, of, of what the audit was. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, we're a little bit later than what we normally have been. Typically, we are presenting this, um, I believe, in October is usually when we present. We're usually issuing the audit in September. Um, this year, the main reason for that uh, change was the implementation of a new standard. Um, this year, uh, if you remember last year, we had to implement the standard for leases. Uh, this year, we had to implement the standard um, for subscription-based information technology arrangements, um, which is basically leases for IT arrangements where you have a subscription that you're looking at something, a lot of it is cloud-based, and it's a, it's kind of, kind of came into being because of everything that is moving to the cloud and the need to look at that, um, those items. So um, there, there was a delay in terms of being able to implement that um, this year, just getting through all the paperwork, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, just took a lot of time. It was more complicated. It didn't end up being, if I remember correctly, nothing was actually nope. recorded, but it, there were a lot of agreements to look at and evaluate, um, and then everyone is unique. I had some school districts that had um, quite a few of them that had to be, and, and others that, where there wasn't. Part of the issue is if you think about leases, um, leases you we knew what those were. You you know what they are when you're when you're entering into a lease. It's it's more usual. These arrangements are something that take a little bit more to look into because it can be all over the place. It can be in curriculum. Um, it can be um, you know um, IT software related to your accounting systems. Those types of things, and it just took time um, to implement. I would fully expect going into future years now that you've got gotten through that first year of implementation. It should be um, take a lot less time to go through it, and we know um, more of what we're looking for, uh, as well as the staff does as well, looking for those agreements. Um, that was the big 
change in terms of new standards. Um, the other thing that we continue to have, not really a change, we've had this since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, has been uh, the ESSER dollars that we're having to, to continue to audit. Um, just in looking things over, you probably have one more year where we're gonna have to look at it, where it'll end up being most likely a major program uh, again next year, where we'll have to look at it. Um, and typically we have one program that we're looking at when we, when we do a single audit. Um, and uh, because of those dollars and because of the risk that's associated with those, uh, we do have to look at that. If you're looking for a place to go to that really summarizes um, our whole audit, there's one page, you know, we can boil this whole thing down to one page, but on that separate, that, uh, the single audit act compliance report, um, that bound document, if you go to page 15, um, there's a summary of auditor's results, uh, schedule of findings and question costs. Um, and this is really, um, I know some people have referred to it as like the report card uh, for an audit where it really summarizes everything that's in our report, that's in all those tape, or in those letters that we have that have detailed information, really sums it up to a table format. Um, so when we're doing an audit, the entire objective of an audit is to, for us to issue an opinion. Um, we assist in preparing the financial statements just out of convenience because we do a bunch of them. Um, and you would have to do, you know, it once a year, and it, and it just becomes, it's an efficiency thing. That's what most school districts do across the state. Probably, uh, I would say, uh, for my clients, school district clients, all of them have us, have us do that. Um, so the opinion that we issued on the financial statements was a modified or a clean opinion. That's what you're looking for. It means you can, be, you can rely on the financial statements uh, to make decisions. Um, as a part of that, that next section is internal control over financial reporting. Um, we're also required under government auditing standards to report any, any items that come to our attention that uh, raise the level where we would consider them to be either material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. We're not giving an opinion on your internal controls, but we, there is a lot that we look at as a part of the audit and we would have to report those items to you. Uh, if they came to our attention during the audit, happy to say there were no uh, internal control weaknesses uh, that we were required to report. Um, the bottom section of this page talks about the federal awards and the, the single audit. Um, because you spend more than $750,000 of, of dollars that originates from the federal government, um, we're required to conduct a single audit. That threshold, um, it's in draft stage right now, but they're looking at upping that, but not upping it to the point where you wouldn't have a single audit. They're talking about a million dollars, upping it to a million dollars, and um, changing a little bit of the rules that are out there. But um, uh, that uh, threshold though, then means we have to go through a process, evaluate all the different programs that you have. Those are on the previous pages. You have the schedule of federal awards. Um, the two programs that we ended up testing uh, this year for Child Nutrition Cluster, um, that's something that uh, we frequently do, especially when you don't have the other dollars, that's usually your, your largest program, um, and what we end up testing. So we tested Child Nutrition, and then we had, uh, audited what's called the Education Stabilization Fund, but, but that includes all of your ESSER dollars uh, in that. Um, we audit that for the purpose of issuing opinion on compliance, um, on those compliance areas that we are required to look at as a part of the federal guidance. Um, and we also, in the same way, look at internal controls over uh, compliance as well. Happy to report there were no findings, um, no issues to report. So um, a clean audit, it's always when you get to look at pages 16 and 17 and it says not reported, that's really what you're looking for and looking for uh, in the audit. So. Um, so again, uh, you know, we do have a separate letter, but that letter uh, does not, there's nothing really to highlight in that letter um, other than uh, there are a couple, there is one attachment. Um, there is an attachment for management letter comments because we didn't have any this year. Um, that those are kind of the lesser items that, that come to our attention that might not meet that threshold of significant or material, but something that we might bring to your attention. Um, but there is attachment A, which is upcoming changes in accounting standards. There are two items on there. Um, 
we do have a break, no new standards to really implement next year. There's one on accounting changes and error corrections, but that would be just if something came about where we had to restate fund balance, which we would not expect that to happen. The other is compensated absences. So we have, that's in fiscal year 25. That would be the next one that we really have to take a look at. And that will be something that will work. We'll start working with Angina next year um, to, as we plan as we're in next year's audit, we will start talking about you know, how we need to implement that standard. That only affects your government-wide statements, um, but which most standards generally mostly affect your government-wide statements, which I know that's not your, generally your focus, you're generally looking at the general fund um, and the effect on the general fund and, and your other uh, governmental funds. Um, but um, it is something that will have to be looked at in the future. So, um, again, it was very, it was clean. Uh, Engineer was ready uh, for us, uh, as always. Um, and again, we look forward to continuing to work with the district. And again, I think we'll be back to that normal time frame next year. Um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have in the audit. I just have to say kudos, Angina, because uh, you do a very nice job of making sure that we are on top of best practice in the business office and that we're all uh, toeing the line and following the rules and she's got a, a she sits in a tough seat, right? So you've got broad shoulders and thank you for all you do. Mm -hmm. And your added job duties. Yeah. <laughs> That's reason. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you very much. much. Seven point zero communications. Uh, Seven point one student representative. Hello. Okay, so apparently we have a lot of events coming up for the students. So when the sports have officially kicked off, the boys basketball team started tonight, and the girls basketball team will have their first home game next Tuesday. We have enough players that came out that both the boys and girls basketball programs are both able to have three teams. There's also a home wrestling meet next Wednesday. And the winter band concert with the sixth graders will be December 20th at 7 p.m. Also, a couple of the different programs within the high school are doing a couple of outreach programs for the holidays. Student government is doing a holiday can drive. As you can see that we have a Christmas tree by the stairwell and all of those donations will be going to the Lions Club. And the National Honor Society is doing a toiletry drive that will be going to the Haven at rest. Would you like to introduce your predecessor? Yes. So this is Leilani. She is the junior. I'm going to butcher the last name. A rodeo. A rodeo. A rodeo, yeah. <laughs> she is going to be shadowing me a little bit because I'm graduating. So, and then also, I am so sorry. I actually have to dip out of this meeting a little early, but Leilani is going to be here. I have basketball practice. So, thank you all for your time. I thank you for all you do for this community, and your work is appreciated. <laughs> and welcome, Leilani. Yeah. Thank you. We don't bite. <laughs> All right. Uh, Seven point two superintendent's report. Awesome. Um, I'm going to be brief because we do have a report for you today, um, an update on the strategic plan, specifically the goal area of our implementation of multi-tiered systems of support. I think that the main thing that I want to highlight for you is that the governor did sign the bill that will change um, the educator evaluation as well as administrator and superintendent evaluation. So um, the main thing to note at this time is that um, those changes won't go into effect until next school year, 2024. So the, this year, the way that things are set up was 60% being the performance evaluation and 40% being based on student achievement data um, will remain in effect. But um, 
ultimately it is a complete revamp of the evaluation system. It doesn't necessarily change the tool that is utilized, but um, in the past there have been three, or four different categories um, for a teacher um, or administrator superintendent that was um, based on ineffective, minimally effective, effective, and highly effective. And now there will be three categories. And I'm blanking on the those where it keeps um, leaving my head. Sorry. Um, effective developing and needing support are the new three categories. And so, um, in the past, you had to have three consecutive highly effectives to go on a um, every other year rotation for being evaluated. And under the new um, law, it will um, require two years of an effective evaluation in order to go to a multi or an every other year cycle for um, being um, uh, being evaluated. Also under the previous system, there was not arbitration for an, uh, an evaluation that an employee would disagree with. They could write a rebuttal. Um, but now there will be a formal appeal process and an arbitration process for um, a teacher that receives a need support um, rating. And so uh, that'll be something that'll most likely come up here as we're working through negotiations uh, this winter and moving into the next year. Um, I believe that uh, outside of that, um, currently there's some bills that are in the House that are being considered, but the um, legislature has recessed for the holidays, so we get to kind of hit pause on that. But um, that teacher evaluation bill is, is hot off the press. And, and if for any reason I learn that we have the flexibility or ability to start working towards implementation this year, we could consider that, but based on um, where we're at in the evaluation cycle, it doesn't make a ton of sense to implement a, a new change halfway through the year. It would probably throw a lot of people off. So, um, yeah, so that's basically everything there. So next we have um, Courtney Coates, who's the district's multi-tiered system of support, systems of support coordinator, who's going to provide a brief update for you regarding the work that's been going on district-wide now for nearly two years to work towards full implementation um, in our district for being able to provide um, tiered interventions for our students. Thank you. I was just going to push whatever button, but April said no. I'm going to heat up. I'm the MTSS coordinator for the district, um, also principal at North Penn. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to present to you when I took this position, not this summer, but the summer before, about a year and a half ago, we did not have anything in place yet with MTSS. So it was brand new. So you're going to see some amazing data because we we built this from the ground up, the entire team. So and then you see, this is, I love this picture because that's actually my reality. So, um, what we're going to talk about is the purpose in our team, our district target overview, which has been shared before, but I'll just point out for one thing, our reports, the implementation plans and action steps, along with the school leadership team, teams, and then their implementation plans and next steps for them that align with the district. All right, so a little background on MTSS. Um, in the DIT district implementation team. The purpose is to, to build and maintain a district alignment with procedures and policies, effective innovations, and continuous improvement through data informed practices. So I gave a little bit of definitions of each what MTSS is. 
MTSS is multi-tier systems of support um, to help student outcomes in behavior and learning. Attendance is in there as well. The DIT, the district implementation team, our purpose was above, and then the school leadership teams. Each building has their own school leadership team and coach, um, and they use the data from uh, MTSS and tiered fidelity inventory along with behavior data to make decisions as well that align with the district. All right, so we didn't, we didn't get around to taking our picture, so we're all Panthers. Mm -hmm. Hi, on our team, myself, April Yates is the executive leader, Trevor DeVoe, Andrew Loy, and Michael Bates are members along with Don Beck who works um, at the Kamloon ISD, so our connection to the ISD as well. So that's our team. Um, the Penfield Target Overview, you've received these many times, um, our five focus areas. I only typed up the first one with the definition because that's the one, that's my focus. Okay? And it's to develop and align MTSS systems K-12. Continue development and alignment of district-wide MTSS. Ensure implementation of the DIT and a school leadership team to support MTSS in addition to behavioral support. So that's my whole focus for our focus. Um, this is a huge point of pride because last year uh, we took of the district capacity analysis on um, the DCA. And when we took that, as we started, we scored 7% last September. That was where we were starting, the ground zero for us. We took it again in March, and then in one year's time, we were able to grow 63% on the DCA with the policies, uh, procedures, and alignment within the district. So a huge growth with just one year's time. Um, the purpose of the district capacity assessment is to assist schools um, to implement effective innovations that benefit students. We establish procedures to help break barriers improve communication and determine effective innovations according to our data. So with that, with our score on the DCA, it breaks it down to areas of need for us and we created goals according to that, SMART goals as we call them, okay? So we have four goals this year. Um, all of them, well we have one that's for June of 25, for the other three are for June of 24. We want 100% of our schools well, I completed the installation work of PBIS, that's the behavior stuff, PBIS Tier 1, as measured by the implementation checklist on my MTSS data hub. We want 100% of our ins uh, installation, initial installation tasks completed by the district implementation team. In June of 25, the district will implement a district implementation for infrastructure to support the use of MTSS as measured by a total score of 80% or higher on the DCA. So our goal is to get 80% right 63. And then lastly, by June of 24, all schools um, will implement EDIS Tier 1 as measured by their TFI Tier Fidelity Inventory with a score of 70% or greater. So those are our focus areas right now according to our data. Then I'm going to introduce our school leadership team because what we do heavily relies on our school leaders and our school leadership teams as well. So we have Ambrosia De Leon at North Penn, Sean Riley at Purdy, Michael Bates at Dunlap, Tremonde <coughs> at Penfield Middle School, and McKenna Kane at the high school, and they are rock stars. They took the tiered fidelity inventory, it's very similar to our district capacity assessment. Um, and this is their scores over time and where we stand right now, okay? They just took the all everyone had them completed in October. So give you a second to see our scores, our clients, and our goal overall is 70% for the TFI. So as a district right now, we are scoring 70.6% on our um, PBIS Tier Fidelity inventory. So they are rocking it out. All of the buildings are rocking it out and doing an amazing job in implementing PBIS. I'm not going to read all this because you have it um, with you as well. I believe you have a handout of the presentation. I was told you we were going to have a handout of the presentation. 
Yes, I'll no. make sure that it gets okay. attached okay. to the agenda so everybody has it. Okay, so I'm not going to read through all that, okay? But just like the district had um, their four goal areas, each building created theirs according to their data on the TFI, and it aligns with the district. All of us sat together to align all five buildings and the district, and we created our own goals according to our school, our scores that aligned with the districts as well. So all buildings have this one same one up about communication and barrier pro protocol. I'll give you a copy of what is being presented to each of the buildings. It is rolling out as we speak. Um, it was just presented to North Penn tonight, in fact, right before this meeting. And then you'll see each building has their own goals. Um, so they're all on here as well. I won't read through them. You can see how they align. But this is how amazing the school leadership coaches and their teams are. Um, oh, it didn't attach. This is the attachment. It didn't attach it. Okay. Um, they have a new protocol in place. If a, it's our communication process with our buildings. And if they have a celebration, an effective innovation that they're interested in, or a barrier, they have this. It's going to be posted throughout the building. Little QR code. And they fill it out. There's a few questions on it. Um, and it goes to their school leadership teams to try to resolve or celebrate or determine if it is a need for the building. If the schools can't resolve it, um, or it's a great celebration or have other needs, it then gets passed up to the district implementation team. So step one is to their building. If it doesn't, their coaches then pass it to the district team for support as well. So that's actually what was linked in there, and I give you a copy of that as well. I did make copies of that one. I wasn't sure. Uh, it's on a different school. Okay. Uh, each building, what we do is we give a survey out to our parents, and it was given during conferences for every building. And this is also linked in for you to see, so I won't go over every single one. But just so you can see, As a district, our scores, when we gave the survey out, you see each building, how they did. So I'm familiar with PEIS as positive behaviors. Um, and then at whatever <coughs> school, and I gave them samples, pause or cry. And you see what our parents said on that. Staff uses positive strategies. See our results. In green at the bottom is the district. Find it easy to understand expectations. Receive regular information on how my child is doing in regards to behavior expectations. I believe the school has explained positive behavior support. Talking about rules in different areas, pause and pride tickets or other reports. Satisfied with behavior expectations at school. I believe my child has benefited behaviorally. I believe my child is reinforced appropriately when he follows the school's expectations and rules. I, and then they all created next steps as well according to their data. So each building has their own, and so they took their individual data and they created next steps for their school leadership team to roll that out. And you'll be able to see that it's in the presentation as well. So we'll read all of these. Thank you very much, Courtney, because this has been a huge undertaking. Prior to starting this work, each building was kind of headed in a different direction with how they were um, going about implementing positive behavior intervention supports. And so by making this embedded into district um, procedures, it's allowed everybody to build a stronger team and network and make sure that we're working cohesively together. And Courtney, you've done a fabulous job of um, keeping all the arrows going in the right direction and um, uh, it, it's all been for the good of our students. Multi-tiered systems of support has been written into the special education law and Michigan code law for nearly a decade that districts should have it implemented if they receive federal funding and so I feel that this is you know directly aligned with the intent of those 
um, things to make sure that all students are getting what they need within the learning environment. So thank you very much, Courtney. Yes. Can we just unplug this one then? I do have a question. Oh, so you guys have done an excellent job implementing um, the behavior end of this. What is the plan and like the rollout to do like the academic end? That's the, next. The yep. So they only, yep. So okay. they always start with one area mm -hmm. and then they move on to the next. So that's an excellent question. So first we start with behavior and we get the systems in place for that. And then we trickle on academics. We trickle on um, attendance as well. So all those pieces will be looked at and uh, most likely we'll uh, invest in a program eWIMS or something like that, early warning indicators, something along those lines, not saying that specific one. So that we can see all those specific areas of need and we can create those same SMART goals, but they align to academics, attendance, behavior, all the pieces. So it's like step one, step two, step three. So excellent question. And it'll take us Five it's years. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. it's usually yeah. over three years to get things really rolling. Yeah. But very good question. Thank you for asking that. It's important. We appreciate everyone's hard work on that. It's a really good team I was gifted for sure. Okay. <clears throat> Eight point zero consent agenda. Superintendent Lemmer is recommending the board accept the consent agenda, which includes the approval of the agenda board meeting minutes from October and November, the check registers, electronic funds transfer, and financial expenditure report. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Eight point six communications to the board. That's part of that. That's part of the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Nine point zero items removed from the consent agenda. Any ten point zero items for approval or discussion? Okay, 10.1, October bond bills. It is the recommendation of the Director of Finance and Operations that the superintendent and the superintendent of the board that the, I'm gonna start over, 10.1, <laughs> October bond bills. It is the recommendation of the Director of Finance and Operations and the superintendent that the board approve the bond bills for the month of September in October for King's, King's Got Associates and Triangle. In a summary, okay, in those amounts are all on board docs. A summary of the services rendered are as follows, and those are all listed and available to the public. Okay. Motion to approve bond bills for October. Support. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? 10.2. Superintendent is recommending that the board adopt a resolution that allows coverage of the countywide response in the event of a natural hazard. Ultimately, the plan gets approved by the FEMA to make it official. The county needs to have a commitment of which local governing bodies would like coverage within Calhoun County prior to the submission of the plan to FEMA. Any discussion on that? I move for the adoption of this. Support. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ten point three. Approval, approved summer annual tax resolution. The Director of Finance and Operations is recommending that the, the board approves the annual tax resolution to continue to collect 50% of the property tax in the summer. Can I get a motion? Motion. Approved. Second. Support. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion 
classes. 11.0 board comments. Anyone have anything tonight? Just congratulations to our two award recipients again, and it was a good start to the meeting to start with something positive and celebrate the community and all the people that came today. That was really neat. Second that, the, uh, I talked to several people who really appreciate the awards being given out to the recognize. I'd like to say thank you to Stephanie, Ms. Lemmer, and her staff, um, her team, for bringing some positivity to our district by recognizing this, our students, and many other things. Um, the change is very clear and apparent and very appreciated for all your hard work. Anyone else? Okay. Adjournment. Meeting is called 7 17 p.m. Your voice, your community.